If you're like me, I can get itchy skinned and scratchy throated after an hour or so of church. I can get distracted and cranky when it goes too long. My feet ache, my backside numbs, my eyes glaze, my mind fogs, my belly growls. I find myself fighting back yawns, and then not fighting them back, letting them gape and roar, a signal to my, a signal to my oppressors, let the people go. <laughs> and I'm the pastor. <laughs> Is heaven church forever? The popular images we have of heaven only make it worse. A long tradition in art, both classical and pop, has depicted it as a playground of plump, porcelain-skinned cherubs flitting about on stubby wings or lolling about on downy clouds, plucking harps, singing in sweet, trilling falsettos. Everything is soft, wispy, dainty, pastel, languid. And this is supposed to inspire us? I have an ambition. I want to recover something that has been almost completely buried under the accumulation of 2,000 years of false ideas. I want to restore something that from the tampering and mauling of countless hands, from the blowing and wheezing of countless pulpits has been so damaged that it's unrecognizable. I want to render a true picture of heaven. If we're going to become heavenly minded, we need a vision of heaven worthy of the effort. If heaven is what the stereotypical portraits of it make it out to be, the chubby angels, the fluffy clouds, chamber music, endless church, I'm no more interested in it than Huck Finn is. The only thing that vision of heaven inspires is boredom, or worse, dread. Have any believers anywhere ever worked in a leprosorium, or burned at the stake, or been devoured by lions because of images of doll-like cherubs danced in their heads? <laughs> I don't think so, but that's what we have. And when I'm trying to share the gospel with a kid who doesn't believe, he says, look, heaven to me, from what I know of it, sounds pretty boring. Why would I ever want to spend my life doing all the things that God says and then end up there? I'd rather, I've heard this statement, I'd rather go to hell and party with my friend. So they have a false view of heaven, they have a false view of what hell's going to be. And we've, in the church at least, we've got to know what heaven looks like. I'm going to spend the last 15 minutes, we're going to look at Revelation. Turn there, I want you to underline some of this stuff. Revelation. Uh, chapter 20, we're going to jump down. There's so much of this I've missed, but that's okay. We're going to start in verse 11, the judgment. Chapter 20, I saw a great white throne, one in throne, nothing to stand before or against. I saw the dead, the great and small, standing there before the throne. The books were open, another book was opened, the book of life. The dead were judged by what was written in the books, the way they had lived. The sea released the dead, death and hell turned in their dead. Each man and woman was judged by the way he or she had lived. Then death and hell were hurled into the lake of fire. The second death. Anyone whose name was not found inscribed in the book of life was hurled into the lake of fire. This is the message. So here's heaven. I saw heaven and earth new created. Gone the first heaven, gone the first earth, gone the sea. I saw holy Jerusalem new created, descending, resplendent out of heaven. What does descending mean? Coming down. Where? <laughs> Out of heaven to earth. Are we going to be in the cloud? Where will we be? The New Jerusalem. Where's the New Jerusalem? On a new earth. Like this. Something like Eden. Something like he created in the first place. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's spending our idea of time and eternity getting us back to a relationship with Him. I heard a voice thunder from the throne. Look, look, God has moved in to the neighborhood. Don't you love that? God with us. What he tried to do from the beginning, and what he did with Jesus, he's coming back, and he wants to be with us. Here, making his home with men and women. 
they're his people, he's their God, he'll wipe every tear from their eyes. Death is gone for good. Death is not a creative force, people. Death is not a sanctifying force, people. Death is gone. Death is the enemy. It's a small enemy. God is bigger. Death is not a creative force. Death is gone for good. God doesn't need death to get to good. Tears gone, crying gone, pain gone. All the first order of things are gone. And throne continued. Look, I'm making everything new. Write it all down. Each word dependable and accurate. Then he said, it's happened. I'm A to Z. What does your Bible say? I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. I'm the, con- the beginning, I'm the conclusion. From water of life well, I give freely to the thirsty. Conquerors inherit all this. I'll be God to them. They'll be sons and daughters to me. For the rest, the feckless, faithless, fire. Let's look at this city. One of the seven angels who carried the bowl filled with seven disasters. Come here, I'll show you the bride, the wife of the lamb. He took me away in the spirit of an enormous high mountain and showed me the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven from God, resplendent in the bright glory of God. The city shimmered like a precious gem. Light filled, pulsing light. She had a wall, majestic, high with twelve gates. These are things, I, I'm, I'm showing you this because this is not something that we can't understand or see. God's revealing to us what heaven looks like. What heaven is. It's a city. What happens in a city? What are good, what happens in a city without sin? Relationship. What else? Is that what you said? Fellowship. What else? Fun. Fun. Oh, you, work yeah. you work together. On what? Loving each other. What else? Glorifying God's name. Glorifying God's name. How? How do you glorify God's name if He's giving? What? Praise. Sing. Praise. Sing. What else? Making work. Things. Making things. When was work created? Before, or after the fall? Before. Before. Before God had a task for Adam. Before sin ever entered the picture. I think He's going to have a task for me in heaven. Because as much as I like to sing and worship and pray and fellowship, I can only do that for so long. We we went on vacation this year for two weeks. And we did all those things. I'm ready to get back to work. God made me to work. He gave me a task to do. I think there's going to be a task for me in heaven. How many of you like to learn? Do you think you're going to know everything the, the minute you land in heaven? No, I think we're going to have time to learn some things. Maybe you think we'll, we'll just carry on business. I think I think they'll be carpenters and Just neighbors. look at this. Let's, I think that too. Let's, look, let's see what Scripture says. At each gate stood an angel. There's these gates. Let's go down to verse 15. The angel speaking with me at the old measuring stick. He measures the city, its gates, and its wall. The wall was jasper, the color of glory. The city was pure gold, translucent in its glass. By the way, does it mention gold in Genesis chapter 2? And gems? The river from the gold come out of it. does. River flows out of Eden to water the garden. The first is named Havilah. It flows through Havilah where there is gold. The gold of this land is good. Sweet scented resin and the onyx stone. Go back to Revelation. He's not describing something that we can't understand. He's, he's recreating what he started with. He started with work. He started with purpose. Everything that he put in the garden is what heaven's going to be like. It's not something that we can't understand. The main street of the city was pure gold. I like that because it's the, the basic building element is our best element. I think that's pretty cool. There was no sign of a temple. What? <laughs> no church? <laughs> Sounded better all the time. <laughs> because God is there. Yes. The lamb of the temple. The city doesn't need sun or moon for light. God's glory is the light, the walls of the lamp. The nations will walk in its light, and the earth's kings 
bring in their splendor. What on earth does that mean? The new earth is going to be popular. It's going to be populated with different nations, just like we have today. There will be kings. Who will the kings be, according to Scripture? His people. His people. To whom much, to whom, uh, who use their talents well. In the story of the talents, it says, you will rule with me, these will rule with me in eternity. The martyrs will rule with him. It says early in Revelation, will rule and sit in judgment for eternity. The nations will walk in his life. I believe there will be nationalities. I will be, believe there will be different languages. I believe there will be a heavenly language that we'll be able to understand each other. But I think I'll have the opportunity finally to be bilingual instead of monolingual, which I am. <laughs> The nation, the earth kings bring in their splendor. That's where I think Sarah's on to something with, I think we'll create things. I think we'll invent things. I think we'll produce things. And we'll bring those things to the glory of God and say, you know, I, I like thinking that the glory of, um, I'm a car guy, what's the glory of Italy? Lamborghini, Ferrari, right? <laughs> Here is our... Here is what we've created with, with the talents and the gifts and abilities that you've given to me. Yeah, we're going to do burnouts on a golden street. <laughs> I don't know, but to me that sounds a lot more interesting than the cloud thing. That's something that I can get excited about. I want to be there. How do I get in there? I need my name in the book of life. My time is out. Let me end with this. Bring the alcohol. Speaking of heaven. Talks about the bride of Christ. What's the bride of Christ? Church. We aren't individual brides of Christ. We are collectively the bride of Christ. Christ is not a polygamist. He will be married to one bride, not millions. We belong to each other and need each other. We should guard not only our own purity, but each other's. We are our brother's keeper. Because we will be part of a community of saints that constitutes the bride of Christ for eternity, and because we will worship and serve him together to prepare properly for heaven, we must be part of the church. That was such a beautiful explanation. I'm not down in the church. We need the church. The church is the bride of Christ. I need you. I need to be in a relationship with you. We need each other to make it through this life and to look forward to something real, something solid, something that is engaging and creative and beautiful and mysterious and good. Because we serve that kind of God. I serve that kind of God, and I want you to too, and I think that you do. Pray and then we'll be done. Lord, we thank you for this time. There's so much more. And we thank you for that. We thank you for the opportunity to learn these things and to know your word. It's amazing that you've given it to us. We need to know more about it. Thank you for this opportunity to share the things that are on my heart. In Jesus' name. Amen.